All right, so there are many instances where you might want to detect light with a circuit. Uh, for example, a sensor or a transmitter. And this video in the next deals with how you might do that. Today's gonna to be the MacGyver approach, using an LED to detect light. That's right, an LED, a light emitting diode, can be a light detecting diode if we just wire it up backwards. That's because as light strikes the surface of this PN junction in the diode, it actually generates a small voltage via the photovoltaic effect. Let's actually wire it up on the breadboard and uh, verify that this is actually the case. Okay, so here are some LEDs I had lying around in my drawer. And let's actually shine a light on them. I have my ultra bright uh, biking light here. So we should be able to produce plenty of photons. And let's uh, wire up our digital multimeter and see what kind of current we can generate. We get zero from the background light. Let's put our ultra super duper bright bike light on there. And it seems to saturate at about 1.45. So from the anode to cathode, the potential was higher here than it was here, based on the way I've put these in. Let's look at the yellow one now, looking at the flat side, which would be the cathode. Fire it up again. Interestingly, you got about 1.66. Incidentally, yellow photons are higher energy than red photons. Let's go for our green one here, which is a smaller area, so that might be a bit different. You can see it's actually a smaller LED. And we're getting about 1.65. Interestingly, 1.66, the exact same as with yellow. I don't know if this is a fluke or there's something to this. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I would expect actually, since green photons are higher energy than yellow, that green would have a higher potential. Finally, All right, we get about 2.33 volts. By the way, if you're ever wondering which side on an LED is the anode and the cathode, usually there's a flat side, and this is typically the anode, and this is the cathode. So this would correspond, this flat side here, would correspond to this part of the diode. Okay, great, so we got a voltage. Okay, this is great. So we can use uh, an LED to generate a photovoltaic voltage and we're done, right? We can sense light. But unfortunately, it's not quite so easy because what we typically want is a given amount of current because we want power. Now, voltage is the energy per charge and current is the charge per time. So the product of voltage times current is your energy per time, which is your power. Let's see how much current we can get out of these things. Okay, so here we've wired up our LED it grows across a one kilo ohm resistor and a switch either opens or closes the circuit. So the circuit effectively looks like this now. We have our LED, we have a resistor, which goes to a switch, which either leaves the circuit open or closes the circuit. Okay, so let's have a look at what we get here. So with our circuit open, let's verify that we get our 1.43 volts and we'll close the circuit. So we'll switch it on and it drops to zero. Or is it actually zero? Very small amount, it looks like. So it looks like, what do we get? A maximum of about, or approximately equal to two millivolts, which corresponds to two millivolts divided by a thousand ohms, or two microamps. It's not a lot of current. This thing is sourcing a very small amount of current because most of it is getting dissipated. Let's just make sure that's true across the board. So we got about four in this case. And with the switch flipped, we get our 2.34. So again, we're getting about, up to about four milliamps for the blue. Okay, let's have a look at the yellow. We're gonna go from 1.67 as we had before, down to a very small value. But that's actually much better. This yellow one, is actually performing pretty well. We got 22 millivolts over one kilo ohm. So that's a nice respectable 22 microamps. That's pretty good. Finally, we'll look at the green and pull the same tricks. So we got our 1.68, we flip the switch and it goes down to a nice middle ground. Looks to be about, about 15 it looks like. I'd say a respectable 15 microamps. Okay, so that's not so great news. They're not very good at drawing uh, current. It turns out that uh, some, this yellow one it turns out, is better than others, this red one, 
at sourcing current, uh, but either way, the current we get is quite small. Fortunately, there's a relatively straightforward way of amplifying a small current using a transistor. Another way of looking at it is transforming the impedance to a very high one so that a small trickle of current corresponds to a measurable voltage. Let's wire it up and have a look. Okay, so we have our small 20 or so microamps that we need to uh, bump up to a more reasonable current. Uh, we can do that, fortunately, without too much trouble with a device known as a transistor. So here's a transistor right here. Uh, and this is a device which can actually amplify current. So without going into too much detail, the way that this works is there's three terminals to a transistor. There's a collector, an emitter, and a base. And as long as VC is greater than VB by a few tenths of a volt, then current through the collector is approximately equal to the current through the emitter, which is approximately equal to some large number beta times the current through the base. And this is about 100. So with a single transistor, we can really bump up our current. And I've, I've chosen a 222 here. So I'm using a 222 transistor, or a 2222 transistor, a lot of twos. And in this particular package, the emitter is here, the base is here, and the collector is here. Uh, we need to give it power. So this is an active device, and I'm gonna need to give it some kind of voltage. So I'll give it a plus, say, 15 volts here. And now uh, I can hold the potential higher than here. What I'm gonna do is a trick called reverse biasing the photo detector, or the photodiode. That allows me to swing slightly larger voltages. I actually have to put the diode in backwards the way you'd normally put it up. And then it goes from a what's called photovoltaic mode to photoconductive mode. And it performs a bit better as a detector. So what I'll do is I'll put that photo current of about 20 microamps into the base there. And as long as this voltage is higher than this, which it will be, uh, I can get current flowing here. Now, where does it flow to? Uh, it's gonna flow through this way. And we actually want a voltage here. We want a voltage, V out. And how do we con uh, convert a current to a voltage? Through a fancy device known as a resistor. So we're gonna put a resistor here and we'll connect that to ground so that V out is equal to I times R, and that's equal to uh, beta times I into the base, which is my photo detector, my photo times R. So we can choose fairly large numbers for this to get a large amount of gain. This is on the order of, what do we say, 20 micros? We can make this large, let's put 100K, why not? 100K, and this uh, beta here we said was about 100, a factor of about 10 to the two. So we should get a, a V out in this case of about, well, if I'm adding these numbers up, 10 to the 7, 10 million times I base for my photo detector, which in this case is going to be about 200 volts. Now, full disclosure, I'm not going to get 200 volts unless I have a high voltage transistor and I have over 200 volts here. Basically, it's going to put out as much voltage as it possibly can. It's going to try to put out 200, but it tells us that we should be saturated right at 15. Let's quickly wire that together and see it in action. Okay, so I need voltage going to the con uh, conductor. I'm also gonna have my LED reverse biased going here. So that's this part right here. And we need a resistor. So I'm just gonna clean this up a bit, get this out of the way over here. And I'll choose a nice resistor here, uh, brown, black, yellow. That looks to be about 100K. So that will go to ground and we'll monitor our output voltage. There's my V out with respect to ground. And we'll flick on the power and we get four to five, not a lot of gain still, but we'll use our super overpowered beefy light. Let's see what we get, oh yeah, and that saturates right away. So you can see it goes from about five and very quickly saturates to 5.04. In fact, if I turn up the voltage, it'll just follow it. So I'm getting a lot of voltage there by putting that here. And we have a good photo detector in this way. We still have a problem for ambient light. It's a bit small still. so. We can either choose a bigger resistor, this is a, my base resistor here, or we can do another trick. So I'm gonna say it's uh, too small for ambient light, but we can multiply it again. We're gonna use what's called a Darlington pair, which is basically just using this amplifying trick of the transistor twice in a row. So what we'll do is we'll have our plus voltage, 15 in this case, and we'll amplify it. And of course we'll have our diode. And now instead of going right there, we're gonna amplify it again. We're gonna send this to another transistor, and then we're gonna get 100 uh, times 100. 
and this is going to be a hundred times i photo and then this will be a hundred hundred times i photo so we can get just a bit more gain this way and of course just as before we'll wire it up to a resistor to ground and this will be our output okay so let's see how that works i'll grab a second transistor So I have my Darlington pair there. Let's grab my resistor, put it to ground, and we should be done. So let's see what we get in this case. And I'll flick it on, and we get eight volts. So if I just cover it up, I get down to 0.87 volts. In fact, if I turn the lights off, I get even less. So that ambient light in the room leads to a fairly respectable photodiode, and we have detected light with an LED. And there we have it. With a couple of transistors and a LED we have lying around in our shelf, we can make a respectable photo detector. In the next video, we'll go through some of the more vanilla ways of detecting light, photoresistors, photodiodes, and phototransistors, the proper way of doing it. Uh, until then, I'll see you next time.